from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. You gonna be okay over there? I'm trying to put my earrings on. Right, to the right. viewers, I'm so sorry. I, I wasn't know. ready, so I'm gonna I put hate my earrings. When ear this newscast gets interrupted <laughs> the rest of our day. <laughs> I'm so sorry. It's all good. Okay, but good as morning. good morning, as I Hi, finish Sarah. getting ready. Good morning to you at home. <laughs> it is Friday. It is July 21st today. Mark your calendars is National Junk Food Day, and someone did a survey. And of course they find, did. <laughs> we're going to find out the top three junk foods in our state. But first up, I want to mention the ins and outs of this study. So this research and analytics team at casinos.com, it says here, took a break from testing casino sites. <laughs> okay. To do much more important research. Right, to find out what the USA's favorite snack foods were. And they took out fast food joints like McDonald's, Burger King, KFC. Basically, this boils down to snacks and candy. Right. Okay, so number one that emerged across the country, Sour Patch Kids is the nation's favorite snack. It is. Kit Kat is the most heavily featured chocolate bar. Let's jump to Texas. Let's see what Texans, and I think it was already on the screen there. Yep, it is. All right, so the top three snacks right here in the great state of Texas are, are you Funyuns fan? I am. I My like husband it hates it. Well, it leaves <laughs> he you says with it's, he Funyuns says it's breath too. Pretty funky breath, yeah. yeah. Also, what to call it? Well, so, so do nacho cheese Doritos leave <laughs> pretty funky breath Well, too. that's also true, Mike. Yeah. I haven't uh, had a watch, I didn't, think, I didn't know they still made them. What are whatchamacallits? It's a chocolate it's a, bar with it's peanut like butter rice, and... Almost like Rice Krispies in it. Oh, you know, oh, that's you know okay, about? okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, no. and then Sour Patch Kids, of course. We're at Texas in line with much of the nation. But, but pick another... St like, Mike, you're from Michigan, so let's see here. Where was Michigan? Okay. Back up one page. P Michi Michigan, your Sour Patch Kids, Starburst, and Pringles. I... Ooh, Pringles, yeah, those are I cool. am very, very concerned for the people of... Uh, no, 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 where is it? Connecticut? Yeah. Number one, granola bar. Oh yeah, no. Connecticut, what I is mean, going good, on? Good, but it's like that's not what you just like. That's binge not well, junk on. food. And granola they like sour bar. patch kids and nerds too. By the way, another fun fact: junk food became a staple of the American way of life after World War II. Okay. When the popular to prepackaged foods grew, though the term wasn't coined until the 1970s. A little extra like, trivia from our producer Alex. Thank you, Alex. I I, I mean. I, Skittles. I can get behind the Skittles. Yeah. What's your favorite? Um, actually, Reese's is one of my favorites. They barely made the list. Yeah, and they barely made hmm. the list. Mike, okay. what's your favorite? As far as, like, that Junk I can just... Food. When you, when you walk into, like, a 7-Eleven, what do you get? Oh, gosh. Uh, like, Candy-wise, it would have to be... Um, do what? I said, he's like, I step into a Slim Jim. <laughs> so what were you going to say? No. Candy-wise, it would have to be... Um, oh, um, it's... Uh, you, you can do it. The caramel with the wrapped up with the uh, uh, Milky Way. No, 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 no. The the thingy. Uh, sounds uh, like uh, 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 <laughs> Baby Ruth. Uh, uh, why am I Packer blanking Jacks. out on this? Uh, uh, milky uh, Three Musketeers. Uh, it comes in the goalie. Anyway. Milky. milky. <laughs> I like Airheads. Don't forget about me. I like Airheads. Airheads. I'll think about All right. it. Um, no, not Rolo. It's got oh the my God. it's the the little thing. There's a left and right. They were doing oh the ad campaign with the left and right. Twix. <laughs> oh, anyway, wow. Mike likes Twigs. That's what happens this early in the morning. Anyway, uh, and, and Pringles are good, too. You can go through a, a ton of those. All right, let's go to and talk about anything not talk about all of the hot weather around here. And, of course, thinking about all that, I forgot to click on my little buttons, and I will do that quickly as I, oh, it's the one that I steal from my kids at Halloween. I know, I know. I'm just having a problem over here. So, see, that's what happens when I do the nine o'clock show, and I'm not used to doing it. So, let's get this fired up here, and we will make the little magic thing happen as soon as it comes up. There we go. And I've got my act together. I think 80 degrees right now. Dew point still at 71, so still a fair amount of humidity out there. 84 is what it actually feels like. 102 high temperature later on today. Starting off the week, 104s. We had those three in a row, 103 yesterday, so I think we'll be down another degree today. The aquifer did go up one little tick. We'll take anything, 628.1, and the allergens mold actually dropped down a little bit more from yesterday, and pigweed is also on the low side. So we've been talking about those uh, rain chances, and uh, yeah, there's one or two of them out there coming up this weekend, but nothing like that today. It's just going to be... Hot, sunny, although low humidity in the afternoon. We'll take a look at the weekend forecast and talk about those rain chances coming up in just a couple of minutes. 
And yeah. Is here with traffic. Look, I, look, I know you guys are talking about sweets, but uh, you know what's looking sweet is traffic right now. So let's get to that because 10 at days of all things have been pretty quiet for the most part. Our morning commute started off a little bit rocky during the early shows of GMSA, but that things have since wrapped. And what we're seeing is some light traffic there at 10 at Crossroads 35 North at Loop 410. Yeah, we're off to a good start as we get the Friday morning commute rolling here. But uh, be on the lookout as you see right behind me, there is a lot of construction taking place in and around the Alamo City. One of the big talking points that we have been keeping a very close eye on is on Long Loop 1604 over on the northwest side of Bear County. North expansion project expected to ramp back up again, and this time we're going to see a full closure. That's going to happen on Sunday, July 24th, and it should wrap Monday, July 25th. This work starts overnight, so 9 in the evening to 5 in the morning. We'll see full closures first. Loop 1604 westbound from Lock Hill Selma Road to I-10. Then Loop 1604 eastbound from Chase Hill Boulevard to Lock Hill Selma Road. Road. And I know a lot of people travel through that area each and every day. It's important information, so scan this QR code. We have a whole lot happening throughout this week's weekend and into the early days of August, believe it or not. Scan that QR code takes you to our traffic page. Know what to expect before you head out the door. Stories this morning, a man is dead after a shooting at the Wood Springs Suites near I-35 and Eisenhower on the northeast side. San Antonio police say the man and his girlfriend were in the parking lot around 3 this morning when they were approached by someone wearing all black. The person who approached them apparently started to bother them and tried to grab the woman. The man intervened, and that's when police say the suspect shot the man, killing him. The suspect took off in a black-colored vehicle. At last check, they were still searching for him. Several crews responded to a major fire this morning that burned one house to the ground. It happened around 6 a.m. on West Poplar Street, east of I-10 and North Flores. Neighbors say even though the homes were boarded up, they would often see people going in and out of them. The fire spread to the two other vacant houses before firefighters could get the flames out. It's unclear how bad the damage is to those other houses. So far, no injuries have been reported. Authorities did detain one person for questioning, but they're still trying to figure out how the fire started. And have you seen this man? San Antonio police say 80 year old Victor Flores has been missing for almost a month now. He was last seen June 28th in the downtown area near North Alamo Street. Police say he has a scar on his forehead. If you've seen this man or know where police can find him, you're asked to call the SAPD Missing Persons Unit at 210-207-7660. Here's today's nine at nine. Nuclear tensions are rising between U.S. and North Korea. North Korea's defense minister is threatening to use nuclear weapons after an American nuclear-armed ballistic submarine docked in South Korea this week. The warning comes as the U.S. is still working to locate the American soldier who crossed into North Korea on Tuesday without authorization. The U.S. is deploying thousands of Marines and additional forces to the Middle East. The move is in response to recent Iranian attempts to seize commercial shipping vessels. Earlier this month, the U.S. stopped Iran from seizing two tankers in the Gulf of Oman, including one instance in which an Iranian vessel opened fire on a tanker. This summer is starting out as the hottest in record world history. A new report shows last month was the hottest June on record globally and ocean surface temperatures hit new highs for the third straight month. July is racking up new records too, and a recent study shows rising temperatures are causing about a billion dollars U.S. healthcare expenses each summer, not to mention the cost of energy, wildfires, and lost crops. The House has passed an FAA reauthorization bill, which renews funding at the agency, as well as the National Transportation Safety Board for the next five years. It also includes measures to improve operations, expand the workforce, invest in airport infrastructure, and improve the passenger experience for air travel. The Senate still has to pass its own version of the bill. 8 and 12 ounce Cupkin double walled stainless steel children's cups are being recalled because they contain lead. The cups were sold in pairs on Amazon and the company's website. The amount of lead found in the cups are considered extremely toxic to children. Anyone who has one of the cups can request a refund on Cupkin's website. Good news for house hunters. The average 30 year mortgage rate slipped to 6.78% this week, the lowest in a month. Existing home sales dropped to a five month low last month, brought down by a chronic housing shortage, which is also slowing the decline in home prices. 
FedNow is finally here. It's an instant payment service launched by the Federal Reserve, letting Americans send and receive funds in seconds. The long-awaited move will compete with private sector systems and brings the U.S. in line with other countries that have had similar services for years. The Fed won't charge people, but banks could pass on costs or lower the current payment cap of half a million dollars. Amazon is bringing its pay-by-palm technology to more Whole Foods stores by the end of the year. Whole Foods customers who choose to use Amazon One won't need their wallet or a phone to pay. They can simply hold their palm over an Amazon device. However, not everyone is on board for paying by palm. Some privacy experts have raised concerns about Amazon One and sharing biometric data. Your chances of becoming a billionaire might be gone, but you could still be a multi-millionaire. Tonight is the Mega Millions drawing. The jackpot is at an estimated $720 million. This is only the fifth time in Mega Millions history that the jackpot surpassed the 700 million mark. It has a cash value of nearly $370 million. So get your tickets before tonight's drawing and good luck. And that's today's Night at Nine. In the other morning headlines, legendary singer Tony Bennett has passed away at the age of 96. He'd been suffering from Alzheimer's disease since 2016. His publicist said he passed away in his hometown of New York City. Tony made teens scream in the 50s and performed concerts and shows for more than 70 years. He even toured with Lady Gaga in 2014 and 2015. He had an amazing ability to sing pop hits and jazz tunes, and he will be greatly missed in the music world. And also due this morning, a federal judge has ordered that the trial for former President Donald Trump's classified documents case will begin in mid-May. If that timeline holds, that would mean the trial would fall right in the middle of the 2024 presidential election cycle, which is what Trump was trying to postpone. But again, a judge has ordered that trial begin in May next year. We'll continue to follow the latest on this story. And it is 909 and 81 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA at 9, your feel-good story for Friday. A young boy looking to throw the first pitch at every major league ballpark in the country. And he's doing it for a great cause. I just know that every single one of these kids have a song that they're meant to sing. Like it's inside of them and they just need a shot. Stay tuned for that story a little later in our newscast. Before that, our weather team has mentioned the lake levels before. And unfortunately, Canyon Lake is getting very close to hit a historic low. So when we come back, Garen Berenger is getting in the water to show us just how low the water level is. Canyon Lake approaching some historically low water levels. The reservoir currently less than three quarters full. As Garrett Berenger tells us, we could start to see those levels drop even faster. The sun bleached rock and dirt ringing Canyon Lake show how far the reservoir's waters have pulled back from the shore as a relentless heat continues to beat down. Man, it's low. It, uh, we need some rain bad. There's no rain falling at the moment, and the dam has to continue to let water flow downstream. Plus, there's evaporation. And with the lake shrinking, the Army Corps of Engineers says the levels will likely drop faster. Just like if you have a puddle on the street, the smaller the puddle gets, the faster it evaporates. Right now, the lake's about 14 feet below conservation pool, or what you'd consider full. Last year was low too, but it was still right about here. But we're also only a little more than two feet away from an historic low. With the water as low as it is, most of the 23 boat ramps around the lake have been shut down. That means that the few boat ramps that are open are gonna have very long waits and they're going to be very crowded. Tony Sanchez is at the boat ramps a few times a week. He says weights have eased some by, as his account, fewer people come out. But he warned the weekends are still pretty busy, especially trying to leave. If you're lucky an hour and a half, maybe, maybe if you're lucky an hour, uh, up to about two and a half, two and a half hours. So some still find some benefit. Places like this at boat ramp one are normally blocked off to people swimming. Garrett Berger, KSAT 12 News. We have some developing news from Mike Ostrich. Let's go outside with live cam. He finally figured out. <laughs> I don't know why I couldn't believe it. Is food or candy of preference or choice? Twix. Twix. Yeah, it's a good. I had good people. Choice. I just had. I had someone texting me. And they're like, "Tell Mike it's Twix." I was like, Thank "Oh, we you. got it." <laughs> I just had. It, it only took like 15 minutes, but we got it. People Every, everywhere were yelling at their every TV screen. Once in a while, you just kind of you know blank out. It's but Twix. He likes Twix. Or imagine somebody's streaming this at work. What? It's Twix, Mike. <laughs> no, but the other thing too is, you said Pringles. 
You know, yeah. when you just get a can of Pringles and you keep doing this and you don't know how many you've eaten, so. Yeah, it's all uh -huh. been there. Anything, now as far as candy, don't leave it in the car today, so. Yeah, yeah. melty it's, mess. It's too hot for that. All right, we showed this picture this morning, but I, I just still want to think, is it kind of a, a kind of an ominous omen to see a buzzard? They're actually just scary because you forget how big they are when you see them in person. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. There was one on the road one time. It was not moving. I was in a car. And you had a standoff with it? No, I had to go around. It's like <laughs> looking at me going, go walk, go around, pal. So, yeah. Anyway, like, thank you uh, very much. Do you have a Twix? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fight you for a Twix. Anyway, uh, thank you for the KSAC Connect picture, I think. The buzzard on the uh, bird feeder there, bird bath. Uh, we've got a lot of uh, sunshine right now. Clouds have cleared out that we started off with earlier this morning. As of yesterday, 13 in a row. We've had about 25 this year, but 13 in a row as far as triple digit days. And based on the forecast, pretty good bet we're going to be moving into a tie for third and then a tie for second by tomorrow, by once tomorrow is over. And I think uh, first place may be in jeopardy as far as uh, just looking at the forecast. Now we are going to continue to get up to 91 today at noon and then top off at 102 later on this afternoon. Again, down a degree or so from where we were yesterday and then finally dropping back into the 90s once we get into the uh, evening hours when things cool off a little bit or temperatures ease ever so slightly. All right, let's jump ahead to tomorrow and those rain chances. Now we've got a, a little bit of a disturbance coming in here from the north and this particular computer model by late afternoon dinner time does have a couple of showers trying to form up this little Technically, it would be a little bit of a front. It's not going to do anything as far as temperatures. I, I hate to use that phrase, but um, it will be working its way in here. Enough of a disturbance to maybe touch off one or two showers. A couple of thunderstorms around here. You're probably going to count them on one hand. Don't get your hopes up high for any rain tomorrow. It'll be few and far between. Same thing on Sunday. What's going to be happening is the high, which is pretty much sitting on top of us right now, starts to work its way off to the west a little bit more, and that puts us into this around that clockwise rotation, somewhat of a northwesterly flow. So that's going to take some of this energy up here to the north and push it down in our direction, and that's going to help to touch off again one or two of those showers, uh, maybe one or two of those thunderstorms. Now Sunday we will also have a little bit of an opening to the Gulf of Mexico, if you will. So perhaps a sea breeze shower thunderstorm tries to develop. Go into the middle part of the week and the first part of the week, I should say the high kind of moves back on in here. We warm up a little bit more. Now there is one at least long, long range. Something that looks encouraging is going in toward next weekend. A little bit of a wave wanting to develop out here in the Gulf and move on in. So if that were to happen, that could be a potentially decent little uh, rainmaker. But again, that's still at least a week away. We're going to be staying triple digits through the weekend. That rain chance tomorrow, Sunday, and hope for the best, but don't be disappointed if you don't get anything. And then 103s for the first half of next week. Can you imagine if it actually does rain at all in those coming days? People are sending K KSAT Connect pictures of just yeah, it'll be those you know, brief little showers, windshield. maybe yeah. a decent little downpour here and there. And a lot of folks are going to be crying. And um, some folks will go, yay, free lawn watering. So please. Yeah. Thank you, Mike. 919, 81 degrees. We've been talking about the heat all summer and how to keep ourselves safe and healthy during these intense temperatures. But the heat can also take a toll on our phones and devices. So when we come back, RJ Marquez is going to be speaking with the general manager of AT&T to get some tips on how to protect our phones from overheating and what to do if it does. Welcome back to GMSA at 9. We all know how crucial it is to protect our kids and our pets from the summer heat, but you may not think about the toll that these temperatures can take on your phone. Joining us this morning with some tips to make sure that we don't fry our phones this summer is Luis Silva from AT&T. Good morning, Luis. So first of all, how can the heat affect our devices and what should we be watching out for? Uh, good morning. Thank you for having me. Yes, there are different ways in which the heat can hurt your phone. But first of all, and we don't think about it that much, is when your phone heats up, actually it loses a lot of battery, right? Because the heat tends to drain a lot of your battery. So if it's running too hot, the battery will wear down quicker. That's number one. Number two, 
high temperatures, really high temperatures, especially like the ones in Texas, could really warp the plastic pieces on your phone and it can overheat some of you, your chips in the circuit board, which can cause a little bit of battery leakage. So it's really important that you kind of avoid that overheating in your phone. Okay, Luis, so what are some best practices for making sure that these things don't happen that you just described? Okay, number one, do not leave your phone in your car, right? So we all know that it really can affect this. Avoiding direct sunlight is really important because, you know, the glass will get very hot and, you know, there is, it is really important to ensure that your phone has like a case like this, which is thermal protective, right? So it protects it from the heat and it will help, you know, your device be better, but, you know, extreme temperatures. Um, and if your phone is at a hundred degrees, it's really, really, it will shut down. A lot of the phones have that, that it will shut down immediately. So please don't plug it in right away because it will really affect it as well. Yeah, very interesting stuff there. So what should we do if we are concerned that maybe our phone has actually been exposed to too much heat? Okay, number one, and this one is super important, please don't put your phone inside your refrigerator. A lot of the people, what they do is they wow. the phone heats up, then they put it in the fridge. What it does is it causes some condensation and it will affect it. So rule of thumb, turn it off and bring it inside air conditioning or under a fan or close to your AC vent so that it starts cooling down normally and give it some time. Make sure you turn it off, right? And please, please, please do not plug it in, right? Because when you plug it in, uh, you're bringing energy into the phone which generates heat, which could affect it a little bit. Mm, they put it in the refrigerator. That one caught me a little bit <laughs> off guard there. Yep. But uh, are there any gadgets, Luis, or apps that might keep our devices safe or any other bits of advice that you might have for us before you go? Yes, there, there are several uh, gadgets that in apps that tell you if your phone is overheating. Um, the newest phones, they all come with that, right? They tell you even if it's an Android phone or an, uh, an Apple phone, they will tell you if your phone is heating up. So that will help you in, in getting that. There are several apps that can give you information regarding the temperature of your phone and how much battery you're draining. And that will give you some, but the biggest advice I could give you, especially with the price of phones today, is get some insurance on your phone. It's cost effective, and these devices cost close to a thousand to fifteen hundred dollars. It's really important that you always have insurance on your phone, especially in the summer, because you tend to be outside at the beach or in the water and everything. You might either lose your device or something might happen to it, but really, really make sure that you have some protection and insurance on your phone. Yeah, that's definitely a big fear of mine, losing my phone in the water. Well, thank you very much, Luis Silva from AT&T. Thank you again for your time today. Thank you so much for having me. And if you missed any of this information, you can find this interview again on KSAT.com or our YouTube channel. Guys, back to you. Thank you, RJ. We have some good news about our phone bank yesterday. Our KSAT community partners were raising money for Project Men, and we're happy to report we raised a total of $4,700. We had about $2,350 donated by viewers calling in. The rest of the money was donated from Harvey Najem and the Najem Charitable Foundation CEO, Melissa Bowman. So thank you so much to everyone who called in and donated. Absolutely. It's all leading up to the Project Men citywide donation drive this weekend. You can drop off a medical equipment at Wonderland of the Americas tomorrow from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. For more information, check out ksatcommunity.com. Project Mint is the oldest and largest nonprofit that accepts and repurposes medical equipment. It's 928 and 81 degrees. Glad you're with us. Still to come, how to spot fake reviews when you're shopping online. We'll tell you what to look out for when deciding to make your next purchase. And if you've seen a lot of debris on the road, roadways from tires, it's probably because, get this, the extreme heat we've been dealing with. When we come back, what you need to double check on to make your, sure your wheels don't have a, a blowout. The extreme heat means it's blowout season on Texas roads. Maybe you've seen the tire remnants littering the highways. Auto experts tell us heat can be downright dangerous if your tires are old, worn, 
or not inflated properly. So low tires create more friction and more heat on top of those 160 degree roads. You don't want to overinflate either and the tread, it can get worn, dried out and cracked. You have a tire that does not grip. You have a tire that does not have very good traction in wet weather. So it's very dangerous. It also becomes a blowout hazard when that happens. Stephen Cavazos have also also made those warnings every morning on GMSA. So under the hood, the heat can shorten the life of your battery. If it's getting close to three years old, we're told it's a good idea to have it checked out so you don't have a dead battery at the worst time possible. It's usually when that happens. Absolutely. Outside with live cam, blue skies, just a little bit of haze in the air. Beautiful day to fly if you're headed somewhere to date my coaster, Hage. Probably need a little extra runway to take off, though, at this time of the morning with all that humidity out here. And uh, yeah, because believe it or not, even though humid air feels really heavy, it's actually less uh, dense than, than dry air is. And so that's why it takes a little extra time to uh, slip the surly bonds of Earth, as the, the poem says. So we've got yeah, a lot of clear skies out there as of right now. Temperature stands at 80 degrees. We did on the hourly readings hit 77 this morning, and that's only two degrees above the normal low temperature. Dew point is at 71, so yeah, there's humidity. Um, not like, you know, what we've experienced a couple of weeks ago, but enough out there and that will be dropping down. By the way, CPS Energy, it is a yellow day as far as uh, energy conservation. You can find out more about that by just scanning that QR code. And as far as today, warm and humid this morning, we will make it up to 102 later on today. So this will be the 14th day in a row we've seen triple digit temperatures and yes, the humidity will drop down. So that's the one saving grace that we have is the fact that we are at least having the humidity as we call it mix out in the afternoon. So it doesn't feel that much above the actual air temperature. Low hundreds this weekend. Yes, a couple of showers. No, not everybody's going to be seeing rain. As a matter of fact, most folks won't be seeing any rain tomorrow and or Sunday, perhaps something on the sea breeze on Monday. And then after that, more triple digit temperatures actually will go up a couple of degrees from where we are over the weekend. Perhaps a little glimmer of hope beyond that. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Thank you, Mike. A San Antonio seafood restaurant trying to get back on its feet after a fire last month and a low score on their recent health inspection. The manager tells our Tim Gerber they've made some big improvements behind their kitchen door. A grease fire nearly destroyed the J. Anthony Seafood Cafe in the 7200 block of Northwest Loop 410 last month. The kitchen area is sustaining significant damage, forcing them to shut down for repairs. The fire happened just weeks after the business earned a 76 on their May health inspection. They were cited for not following proper cooling procedures, including food in a walk-in cooler that was 170 degrees. Raw fish and octopus were also above the recommended 41 degrees, which was a repeat violation. There was mold-like buildup on the soda fountain ice dispenser and nozzles. No one washed their hands. One worker did change gloves, but without washing. I stopped by this week to see how they're doing after the fire and the corrections they've made. Manager Johnny Cruz pointed out several improvements. We already put all the new ceiling tiles, the new lighting, um, just basic cleaning like up there. He's hoping to do better on their next inspection, which he looks forward to. It's a good thing. Yes, because it keeps us on our toes. <laughs> Taco Nando, located in the 2800 block of Nogalitos, got a 72 on their May inspection. The business cited for leaving chorizo sitting at room temperature for too long. Pork chops were stored in a cooler that was too warm. Food containers, racks, and shelves all needed to be thoroughly cleaned to remove grease buildup. A worker dropped gloves, picked them up, then handled cooked tortillas with bare hands. There was a small roach in a sink and several areas needed to be cleaned. A reinspection was ordered this week. The owner said he's made the corrections. <laughs> Damasi Mediterranean Buffet in the 100 block of Southwest Loop 410 comes in with a 78. The buffet cold hold was too warm. The buffet for the pizza wasn't hot enough. There was black mold like buildup in the soda machine, ice dispenser and soda fountain. Several sinks were not able to produce hot water. The kitchen area was in need of a thorough cleaning. They were reinspected. <laughs> Eva's Cafe Food Service in the 200 block of West Mitchell got an 80. 
A bag of vegetables had to be thrown out because of mold. Buckets of diced potatoes were sitting on the floor. The inside of the ice machine had rust-like residue, and an employee was seen making tacos with their bare hands. A reinspection was ordered. For Behind the Kitchen Door, Tim Gerber, KSAT 12 News. Well, many of us rely on product reviews when shopping online, but not all reviews are genuine. So how do you know whether the reviews for your next purchase can be trusted? ABC's Morgan Norwood tells us what to look out for. When online shopping, many of us take a look at the reviews to know just how good a product is. When I buy something, I want to make sure it's not going to break or that it's going to be worth my time, that's going to last. So Mary Beth Quirk at Consumer Reports admits it can be hard to know for sure if those glowing five-star reviews are real or fake, but there are some telltale signs of fake reviews to look out for. Quirk says to be cautious of identical phrasing and multiple reviews. Wow, this product changed my life. If you see that 17 times on a page, that product better really be life changing, but it's probably not. It's probably more likely that it's a bunch of fake reviews or somebody who's paid to do reviews and isn't really being honest about them and is just kind of churning them out. Take note of the timestamps. If a bunch of positive reviews flood the site in a short amount of time, they might not be authentic. There was one time I realized that one day I looked at it and there was a normal amount of reviews. And the next day I went back and there were like 20 to 50 new reviews. And I saw they had all been posted the same time after I'd looked at the page. The website FakeSpot can be a great resource. It uses an algorithm to evaluate the quality of customer reviews for products being sold at major retailers. And if you're looking at ratings on Amazon, check for verified purchase badges. Basically, anybody who's using Amazon could go on there and leave a review for something, even if they haven't bought it. So what the verified purchase badge is, is Amazon on its end has confirmed that somebody purchased that product through their site. And if you're interested in a specific review, click on the reviewer's profile for their history. If you see one reviewer uses that same phrase on 30 different products, take that with a grain of salt. In the end, Quirk says to trust your gut. If somebody's being really over the top, if, if the reviews are just totally wild and, you know, it turns out to be like a stapler, it's like what the, how, how life changing is that stapler? So if it's too good to be true, it probably is. Morgan Norwood, ABC News, New York. 939, 83 degrees. You're watching GMSA at 9. Still ahead, a young boy with a love for baseball is on a special mission to help others who are like him get adopted. People with Down syndrome tend to have a little extra love, a little extra ability to love people for who they are and meet them where they're at. This story will definitely put a smile on your face, so stay tuned for that. But before that, Sarah Spivey taking us to the San Antonio Zoo to introduce, introduce us to a new friend and show us how the zoo is keeping guests cool in the heat. And as we head to break, here's a look at some of the activities going on at public libraries around the city today from 1 to 3 p.m. Kids 5 to 12 years old can play with Legos at the Landa Library. And then at 3.15 this afternoon, parents and guardians can take their kids to the Thousand Oaks Library um, for some arts and crafts. For a look at all these events that are scheduled today around our city, just head to ksat.com kids section. Fair enough. Okay, let's check on Transcat right now. We've got a couple of stalled vehicles right now. This is one that is, uh, I believe, westbound at New Braunfels. And then we've got one eastbound down near Nacogdoches. So same general area there, kind of by San Antonio International Airport. We'll be back. is partnering with the San Antonio Zoo. It is always a great day to visit the zoo. And here with me, I have Kyle Perez. He's the director of public relations here at the zoo. And Heather, you have Miss Greta, right? Yes. Tell us a fact about Miss Greta. So she is a three-banded armadillo, and they are going to be the only species that can roll up into a full ball. She's so cute. She looks like a roly-poly. <laughs> okay, and Kyle, you know, tell us a little bit about Miss Greta. She's an animal ambassador. Yes, exactly. So Miss Greta is an animal ambassador, which means she comes out and does shows here at San Antonio Zoo where presentations, you can catch her every hour. We are doing something different here at San Antonio Zoo. So you're not just coming to the zoo and wandering around, but instead you can meet the keepers. You can meet an animal like Greta, meet and greet them. So it's really an experience you can't get anywhere else other than here in San Antonio. That makes a lot of sense. And you don't need a meteorologist 
just to tell you it's hot outside, but the zoo has plenty of ways to keep cool. What's something new you're doing this summer? Sure, so we, when you come to the zoo, you don't just stand out on the heat. We have misting stations, we have cooling zones. We have so many opportunities in Oasis around the zoo as you wander, but we even have a new show and programming called the Splash and Safari Water Party, where the Great Lawn turns it into an entire splash zone where you're gonna get wet if you're around there. So just be careful, but also it's a great time to just cool off and relax. And fun for the adults too, right? I hear something about adult beverages. Yes, so we are introducing the Continental Cocktail Tour. And that's gonna happen here at the zoo where you can visit Africa, you can visit Australia, you can visit, we're in Asia right now. But really we're gonna have different cocktails and mocktails for the kids in every single spot. So take the challenge, do our Continental Cocktail Tour. Well, that sounds wonderful. For more on Science with Sarah and the San Antonio Zoo, you can go to ksat.com. And as we say every day, it's always a great day to go to the zoo. Live look at the flamingo exhibit out there where they're expecting a busy weekend. But uh, they're doing their, they're doing their dance where like they trade off the shadows. It's like, yep. OK, you've been in the tree shadow <laughs> for this long. Now it's my time. But you'll see in a little bit that no one will be on the burning sand because it burns their feet. I mean, I'm making all this up, but this is this is true. You sounded expert level there for me. <laughs> It's definitely burning their feet, though. Yeah, Mike Ostrage is here. And Mike, as you often say, don't forget to hydrate, even when you're not thirsty, when you're yep. involved in uh, being outside. And even think about it, if you, you know, kids are running around in a splash pad or in a pool, you can get dehydrated that. So, yeah, oh. the experts always say just continually, if you're going to do anything outside, drink a lot of water and then think about it because it won't be long now until all the kids start with all the band and cheerleading oh and gosh. football and the triple digit heat yeah so you might want to get them in the habit of uh, you know drinking lots and lots and lots of water all the time and then just find try and find a cool space to uh just try to beat the heat a little bit there yeah sergio chilling out in the grass and uh i'm a little bit jealous that you actually have some green grass there because my backyard is now just a lovely shade of kind of a medium tan, if you will. Brittle beige? Yeah, yeah, brittle beige. I like that. It's good. Beige. Good color. <laughs> Thank you very much for the KSAC Connect picture. Plenty of sunshine out there at the airport right now. The humidity, the dew point temperatures, it if it felt just slightly more comfortable when you stepped outside, they're down two degrees compared to this time yesterday. Doesn't seem like a whole lot, but it does make that much of a difference, especially when you go from about 73 or so down to 71 for a, a dew point. So, yeah, just we'll take little, little bits, uh, little tiny victories here. Satellite picture, uh, we had a few clouds hanging around this morning, really don't show up too awfully well on that uh, infrared picture. Notice up to the north that system that see that low kind of spinning there right along the Kansas Oklahoma border working its way off to the east. That obviously is not going to have any direct impact on us, but there is some energy a little bit further up there to the northwest and you can almost see the clockwise rotation out here just to the west of us. That's the big high, which is causing our heat, which is causing all the heat around the southwestern about half of the United States. What's going to be happening is that high will kind of move off to the west a little more, grab some energy up there to the north and push it down in our direction. That's why computer models tomorrow do have a couple of showers, maybe a thunderstorm or two trying to pop up. But, you know, you step back and look at that, you can almost count everything, at least showing up in this model, on one hand. And that's going to be the situation tomorrow. So don't get your hopes too high for any rain. Jump ahead to Sunday. Now, this is one of those long range models that tends to broad brush everything. So this just means the opportunity is going to be there. It's not like it's going to be raining everywhere where there's green on there, but at least there is going to be that small chance for a couple of showers around and that will be in through tomorrow night. Maybe a sea breeze shower then on Monday, but after that pretty much rains out of the picture. The high will scooch off to the west a little bit. Again, puts us into that northwesterly flow and then it starts to work its way back in here as we go into next week. And that's why we get, you know, 102 today, 101 Sunday, but we'll start to go up another couple of degrees as that thing just about sits right smack on top of us again. The one glimmer of hope, though, notice how because with that clockwise rotation, everything's coming from east to west then and this little wave right here. The hope would be, at least in this long range model, that uh, we get a little bit of a wave coming in here by then next weekend, perhaps a couple of showers by then. But until that point, uh, you know, hopefully you get a little lawn watering this weekend if you're one of the lucky ones. Otherwise, 
just very hot. And we will continue our stretch of triple digit temperatures. I need to do some uh, hand watering today. Oh, it's yes, almost like indeed. twice a day for me to keep my zinnias alive. They're just to get home, they're wilty, I water them. But then in the evening, they're wilty again, so I have to water them. I don't know. It's the whole ritual. I know. The whole ritual. It's a whole thing, guys. Either you, you're all in or you're not. And I like the body language. They will, they will. <laughs> Our Sarah, 950, <laughs> 83 degrees. When we come back, we're wrapping things up with a feel-good story of the day. A young boy hoping to throw the first pitch at every Major League Baseball stadium, and he wants to do it for a good reason. We'll be right back. We've saved the best story for last. An aspiring young pitcher throwing out the first pitch at a couple of Major League Baseball stadiums, all for a good cause. ABC's Will Gans explains what what the young boy is hoping to achieve and how the effects of what he's doing are being felt far beyond the baseball diamond. Cooper Murray is bringing the heat this summer. The pint-sized pitcher taking the mound at a recent Cubs game. The MVP giving us a post-game exclusive. How's it going, Cooper? Yeah. I like your Red Sox shirt. Thank you. At just 11 years old, Cooper has already thrown out the first pitch for both the Cubs and the Red Sox. But that's just first base in a grand slam of a plan. The goal on this is for Coop to be able to throw out the first pitch in every MLB stadium. So there's 30 of them out there. And the goal would be that we help 30 orphan children that have Down syndrome get adopted. Coop's mission, shining a light on the joy and happiness that can come from adoption. What is it about Cooper that brings them such joy? Here's the special thing about this, is it's not exclusive to Cooper. Coop's super special, but I would say a big part of it is it's the fact that he has Down syndrome, and people with Down syndrome tend to have a little extra love, a little extra ability to love people for who they are and meet them where they're at. Coop, throwing strikes and inspiring thousands along the way. How does that make you feel as a dad when you see Cooper step up and, and just nail it? Hard not to get emotional seeing it. You know, I just know that every single one of these kids have a song that they're meant to sing. Like it's inside of them and they just need a shot. Will Gans, ABC News, New York. All right, don't forget to join Mike and the gang for SA Live today. They're <laughs> Barbie themed show, right? Kennergy. Yes, right. indeed. You'll be bringing the Kennergy dressed as Ken. And some San Antonio to. places have Barbie themed goodies this week. That's Barbie right. Does. So La Panderia Bakery is offering pink conchas the entire month of July. Voodoo Donuts selling a, a pink signature pink donuts. And Box Street Social is going to have a Barbie themed cocktail all month. Cold Stone Creamery's got an all that glitters is pink creation, and that's at Cold Stone Creamery. You were saying, Mike? I was going to say, Jen is going to be live at one of the locations. It's all Barbie-fied, I guess you can say. And Mike just had to go into his closet and pick out daily wear <laughs> to look like Ken. Happy weekend, happy Friday. <laughs>